it welcome forensics biology uh, man I have missed being in the classroom I don't know about you but uh, this whole online distance learning is a big change and uh, either I'm not good with change or I just liked how things were so uh, I just want to talk about and record uh, this um, lecture I want to go through this try to keep it about 30 minutes or so and I think I'm going to break this up next uh, chapter a little bit. Your quiz on this will be on Thursday, uh, so you can uh, go through this on uh, tomorrow. And I'll post this today uh, so you can uh, use this information uh, as there's a little bit more than just the um, PowerPoints. Uh, you should be following along, taking notes uh, from the daily lesson plan, uh, putting that into a notebook or a computer or uh, however you are doing notes. Uh, so let's uh, go ahead and begin. Uh, so let's go over the introduction of forensic anthropology. Uh, it is pretty much looking at skeletal remains and coming up with ways to identif identify who they are, uh, the sex of the individual, um, the age of the individual, the stature and ancestry. There's a lot of different things that you can determine um, about uh, the skeleton of um, the deceased. Uh, so that's pretty much what that is. Um, you can also pull uh, DNA. That's what they did. Uh, we talked a little bit about this with the Romanov case. You will have a, another uh, activity doing the Romanov case tomorrow on Tuesday uh, that you will be um, pretty much using the, the bones and the skeletal remains to identify the, the Romanovs uh, and which bones pretty much belong to uh, who and we'll get into that a little bit more okay so there's this biology uh, biological profile that bones can uh, pretty much uh, make about the individual. One is ancestry. Uh, so the skeletal structures are slightly different for different ancestry uh, between um, Caucasian, African, and Asian. And we'll get into those. Uh, a lot of different historical, it's been about 200 years or so that they've been using the uh, anthropology uh, for to help uh, understand um, crime and things like that. So first, let's get into a little bit about what bones are, what they do, and, and things like that. Uh, bones, your skeleton, okay, they are going to, one, provide framework. Without your bones, you would not be able to stand upright. You would just be this bag of goop uh, or tissue. Uh, so not only are they going to provide a framework for your body, but they're also going to aid in movement. And that's going to be because they allow muscles to attach those muscles are going to contract pulling bones uh, closer together and then uh, you're able to move and as well here you have uh, your rib cage which is going to provide protection uh, there's other things as well but this is what your textbooks are going to say as far as the uh, physiology or the functions of bones such as storage red blood cell production and things like that uh, but these are the ones you need to know Now, we do need to know jo uh, joints. This is uh, was a question, uh, one of your questions for the day. There's three things. There's really four things that you need to know about joints. One are the bones. They are connected together. That's what a joint is called. So one is you're going to have the bone. Okay. Two is then you're going to have cartilage. All right. Cartilage mainly being on the ends of the bone. That's going to act as kind of this uh, friction reducer. You don't want bones rubbing together. That would be very painful. So cartilage, uh, and that is uh, considered what is called uh, highline uh, cartilage. Then you have ligaments. Ligaments are going to be a type of tissue that's going to connect from bone to bone. So it adds support uh, to your joints. And then you have tendons, which will connect muscle uh, to bone and that's where you get that connection uh, from the muscle system to the uh, skeletal system. Uh, bones are going to develop really in three different ways. Um, the development of bone is called ossification. 
there's lengthening of the bone, there's widening of the bone. Um, so I'm not going to go into the great details of that. Just know bones are going to grow. Uh, you probably heard of your growth plate before. It's pretty much this cartilage that where your bone is going to replace uh, bone with cartilage. So it kind of grows on top of each other. Uh, and that's going to cause that lengthening of the bone and overall that's how you increase your height is your lengthening of your what are called your long bones so a human okay uh, adult human is going to have 206 bones now that's going to change okay as you grow older your baby you're going to be born with about 270 uh, bones and pretty much what happens is these bones end up fusing together to make uh, one bone uh, so that's why adults are going to be and going to have 206 and we'll learn about some ossification or some fusing of um, skull bones that will help determine age as well so it goes through about 60 years where these bones are going and, and fusing together and that's how you're going to help determine the age of um, a skeletal remain so here's some example. This would be a process called endocondyle ossification. You don't necessarily need to know that, but you can see that the lengthening of this bone, starting off here from each side, it's going to grow on top of each other. So from this side, you can see that this here, superior side of this bone is gonna grow. The, uh, sorry, superior here, inferior. So superior side here is growing, it's getting longer. Inferior side here is growing and getting longer. Therefore, you're resulting in a larger bone. All your bones get larger or longer. You increase in height. Okay, so they take the size. In order to predict height, uh, I believe it's at age three, they're going to take the length in uh, your femur and uh, calculate that with growth rate of bone and that will pretty much determine how tall you will be when your bones stop uh, growing. So that's how they get uh, predicted height and things like that. So here bones can, this is part of that biological profile that your bones are going to um, create. Okay, one, you can determine uh, injuries, disease, nutritional deficiencies, things like that. Uh, broken bones being an injury uh, in bone uh, repair. It's a process of fixing a break for the most part. You get these calcifications or calluses that are going to form um, and they're going to repair the bone. And you can be able to see that through an x-ray or something like that. Pretty much all of these you can see through uh, an x-ray. Uh, except maybe, uh, no, actually all of them you can. Uh, osteoarthritis, if anybody knows who Peyton Manning is, uh, he's a Hall of Fame quarterback that uh, had osteoarthritis in his neck. It's pretty much when bones fuse together. Now bones, this will cause a problem because bones uh, need those joints you would no longer be able to move. So um, a lot of times you see this happening in the spine. Uh, where a vertebrae will fuse to another vertebrae uh, and it's not uh, as dramatic as say if it was to uh, happen in an elbow or knee or something where you can't move that. Uh, osteoporosis, that is pretty much you're losing bone density so your bone is going to get brittle, it's easier to break. Uh, rickets is going to be a nutritional deficiency that uh, it's really going to affect uh, babies, uh, bow-legged, le a thinner skull. So once again, not being able to protect uh, the, the skull or the brain and things like that. Severe an uh, anemia, that's a deficiency in nutrition, uh, iron uh, for the most part. And that can uh, develop with uh, holes in the skull, mainly in the eye sockets. Uh, and then uh, cancer, uh, bone cancer as well, you can determine... Uh, that based on different uh, things that are present. Also, you have the geography. Uh, so bones, it's kind of like hair, where hair can determine where that person lives. Well, uh, the same thing here is that you are what you eat. So those isotopes that you eat, those being strontium, carbon-13, carbon-14, are going to get used and uh, help develop bone growth. Your bones are growing and remodeling is what it's called uh, all the time, okay? 
so your your bones are going to be constantly replacing itself and uh, so your body is using the nutrients that you're intaking so certain locations or geographic locations will have these isotopes which will help determine pretty much where you're where you're from so kind of interesting fact there also can distinguish between males and females uh, there's really two uh, bones that we're going to look at the skull being one and then the pelvis uh, being the other um, the others being uh, really just thickness that you're looking at uh, so you have kind of males are going to be more uh, robust meaning that they're going to be more thick uh, and that's mainly just because uh, males tend to have more uh, muscle tissue than that of females so therefore that added uh, thickness and, and density of the bone will help with uh, the increased muscle tissue. Now bones are designed to withstand a great deal of pressure vertically they do not withstand a great deal of pressure horizontally. What that means is it only takes two pounds of pressure to uh, break a, um, a radius or a bone in your forearm. Uh, so if you apply the pressure at a 90 degree horizontal uh, impact, it only takes two pounds of pressure. But obviously, uh, we weigh more than two pounds and vertically they can withstand a lot of, of pressure. Uh, so it's a little... FYI, you won't find that in your textbook, but uh, I teach anatomy. So, um, what else? So, let's get into the skull. These are the bones of your skull. I don't remember the top, the number off the top of my head, but these aren't all of them. You're going to have skull bones in the deep in the skull as well. Uh, but here you can have a uh, a list as far as how many you can see. Um, but I, I want to say you have 46, uh, so it may seem like a lot, but don't quote me on that. I'd have to go back and look at my notes. Um, but anyways, those are the bones. So we'll go into a little bit about what's different. The main thing that you can see probably the most common is in a male. Okay. You can see that the forehead compared to the female and also the occipital bone here you can see is quite different as well and also the zygomatic arch here is a little bit different and uh, the square kind of jawline compared to uh, that of a female uh, so this chart breaks it down for you um, a little hard to tell here some of the things uh, eye sockets one of them more square compared to uh, round I guess uh, their um, mandible uh, being a little more square like than more um, thinner or v shaped I guess uh, rounded and then here the occipital bone that's what it, that's what this is um, the occipital being this part here versus that part there the occipital being the back uh, frontal bone this is a low and sloping higher and rounded uh, so you can go through and look at these and compare kind of the, the left side being male, right side being female. Now, the most accurate is definitely taking a look at the pelvis. Now, this is because um, females give birth and males do not. Uh, so males are not equipped with the equipment in order to develop uh, or to give child, uh, to give labor so here looking at it you can see the kind of the pelvic cavity here uh, being much larger in females compared to uh, males here, here you have a heart shaped pelvic cavity compared to a female or a, an oval shaped pelvic cavity as well as the angle of the uh, the pelvic uh, arch as well so we will be looking at that here are the kind of differences. The bone, you have many different bones going back to the diagram of the different bones that make up, up your pelvis. It may feel like just one bone, but there are pretty much a lot of bones that are just fused together. Um, typically speaking, your bone, your, your pelvis cavity or your pelvis is going to be made of four bones, your coccyx, um, your ilium, your ischium, and your pubic bone. 
So the subpubic angle, that's going to be another one. So not only the cavity, but also the angle of your uh, pubic bone, that's going to cause a, uh, a it's pretty pre prevalent as far as determining which one's male and female. Uh, so go ahead and take a look at this, but I want to show you uh, what it looks like. So here you have the adult male. Okay, this is much less than 90 degrees here. Um, and then you have the adult female, which is 90 or more. Okay, uh, so once again, this is equipped and able to bear children. This is not. Okay, you can also see the pelvic cavity here being much smaller than that here. All right, so uh, looking and understanding the... Uh, and analyzing the pelvic bone is going to be easier to estimate the sex than uh, looking at the skull because uh, their their differences are much greater than the others. Also estimating age, there's certain things that are happening. I'm not going to go through them all, but there's a chart here for you. Um, pretty much your activities are going to go over this is you're going to be estimating age uh, based on certain things um, that you notice, you're, you examine about the bones, certain arm bones, your humerus, that's your funny bone, that's the upper arm bone, your femur, that's going to be your uh, upper thigh, um, your shoulder or your clavicle, where it fuses together, that's happening about 23 to 30, or 22 to 30. Uh, so at these temp, uh, ages, that's about when these uh, activities or these uh, become noticeable. All right. So that's how you will determine uh, the um, age of the remains based on these things that you uh, see here. Also, you can uh, determine age based off teeth. Okay. Teeth are made out of calcium. They're going to... Um, deteriorate. Uh, you also have different number of teeth and when certain teeth come in you have two types. You have your adult teeth which you don't lose and then you have what are called your deciduous teeth. Think of it as like trees. Deciduous trees are going to be trees that lose their leaves. Well you lose your teeth and then you have your adult teeth come in. So these are kind of the uh, approximate ages in which these certain teeth come in. Um, so you can see that if certain teeth are present compared to other teeth, then uh, you can develop a, uh, an age for that uh, as well. So not only are you using the bone, but you're also going to be using uh, the teeth. And this is kind of a uh, difference between here you have an adult uh, sco uh, skull. We have these sutures, which are these are a type of joint that are going to connect these bones and at the age of 32 the one on top of your head that runs will split your your skull in half these will fuse together these will fuse together about 50 uh, these will fuse together uh, between about uh, 21 to 30 uh, and then your these will fuse together after about 60 so depending on the age the skull is going to give you a good understanding as to how old this, uh, the, how old the remains are, and this is kind of what a uh, an infant skull would look like. Now these aren't actually class uh, calcified yet. All right, they are more cartilage than they are uh, bone that when they are born, and that's just simply because it's got to get pressed through the birthing canal, uh, so it, it gets squeezed in there and it's able to move a little bit, and then once. Uh, is born then they will turn into a uh, bone and that's why uh, you end up fusing these bones together it allows them to move uh, a little bit compared to if it was uh, what you currently have right now so yes you can determine different ancestry based on certain characteristics of the uh, skull and that's pretty much what you're going to be looking at is the skull itself. So uh, you'll be looking at the skull to determine the different ancestry. Uh, I want to go over some of these terms. Uh, the eye orbits, those are going to be the opening to the eyes. Not, necess not, not necessarily going over that. Uh, the nasal spine, that's going to be the kind of the, the part that runs from the uh, middle of your eyes to the tip of your nose. That's going to be that. Now your nasal index is going to be pretty much the opening of your 
nasal cavity or your nostril to the length or height of your nose. So that uh, you're going to have kind of this uh, range here. Uh, Asian uh, ancestry being 0.48 to 0.53. African being less than 0.53. And um, you have uh, nasal uh, for European being 0.4 or less than 0.48. Now, prognathicism is a, a term which uh, describes the lower part, the mandible, and or the maxilla, your upper jaw, and the mandible, your lower jaw, and it's uh, how it aligns with your face for the most part. Um, so in Asian uh, ancestry, you have different, uh, yeah, it could be flat or prognathic. Okay, this simply means it kind of is outset in front a little bit more than that of um, rather just going flat down. And then your nasal openings as well. So looking at these of the school, you can determine uh, ancestry as well. Now, something to, to look into that you'll need ancestry for, uh, one is to limit uh, and, and narrow down your suspect or your, your uh, sorry, your victim list. But also to estimate height, if you notice here, if you see European ancestry, European ancestry, European ancestry. Uh, so what you're doing here is you're going to take um, the height or how to find the height is you'll take the height, okay, or the measurement of whatever bone it is. So here you have the bone. Okay, um, and it's only long bones that you're going to be doing this. That of kind of the similar process as to what I uh, explained as far as uh, predicting how tall you'll be. Well, this is kind of similar process. Uh, they're doing a growth rate and they're doing uh, this fixed number here for European ancestry. So if you're a male European ancestry, okay, uh, then you're going to use these numbers here. Okay, uh, so. Um, these here, these are just for both sexes if you don't know the, the sex of it. Okay, if you just got a humerus or something like that, then um, you're not going to be able to determine whether it's male or, or female because uh, these are all just long bones. Uh, you can make an estimate just based on the thickness of the bone, uh, and that's pretty much why you have the uh, accuracy that's here. Uh, so you take the length which is humorous, and you'll times it by this number. Okay, so if I was in an, Af uh, an American male of European ancestry and I got a, um, a, humorous, uh, a humorous length here, I would times it by 2.89, all right? And that will end up being my height for, my, uh, uh, for that person. Okay, so these are plus minus meaning. This will give you a range for the most part. So if it was 78.1 centimeters, this range would be anywhere from 74 or so to uh, 52 or so centimeters. So um, therefore, you'd go into uh, get a range for that uh, person. And that's just based on the humerus. And um, so... Yeah, so that's how you would estimate the height. It's a math equation. I know how much you guys like math. Uh, scale of trauma, not only can it tell you about who the person was, or but also how they ended up there. Um, if you've ever watched Bones, uh, it's a TV show on you know, cable or Netflix or whatever streaming source you have. Uh, that's pretty much what they do is they find remains and they're trying to determine one, who the person is, how they died and make connections there. And that's exactly what they are. There's, there are anthropologists that work for the Smithsonian that, uh, work for the local, uh, police department or FBI. I don't remember which one, but they pretty much team up and they, uh, will uh, solve crimes for the most part. So what do I mean by this? How can it tell you the trauma? Uh, well, if you look here, you have a bullet hole. Okay, you can see the difference. Uh, a small opening here compared to a, a larger opening on the back. We, we talked about 
uh, ballistics, a smaller opening in the entry and a larger uh, opening in the exit. And also kind of this, uh, what is called a beveled exit. Okay, so you can see it there, a beveling of the bone as well, you will see. Blunt force trauma, you can see here. Okay, this was uh, multiple hammer blows. But you can see kind of this fracturing and almost puzzle piece type um, fracture pattern. Uh, small pieces, and you can see where it kind of cracked. Uh, so you will see some sort of... Uh, cracking pattern here with a uh, blunt force trauma and also stab marks things like that you can see the nicks and and cuts uh, uh, marks that got left behind as well so as your question was earlier what are the five uh, or six different ways to uh, analyze and identify skeletal remains comparative radiography uh, you'll be doing uh looking pretty much at pictures for this as far as comparing the different uh sources and things like that non-image records comparison uh you're looking into um different um things such as uh, an example of this could be um you know pretty much anything that's not an x-ray uh, you could be using dental implants or something like that to help uh, identify uh, will be part of that as well also DNA analysis we already went over this a little bit with the Romanovs how you can use the DNA of bone to determine who that person is um, this is accurate uh, these other ways are not so much uh, one uh, other or these kind of can come into two different these two can kind of be combined here uh, one is a superimposition using a photograph or video so you'll project based on their landmarks and things like that of the bone you'll project a picture uh, of what they look like um, and then cranial facial reconstruction is doing that but with some sort of uh, three-dimensional model that you will build and to the left here you can see that is what this person is doing uh, so you have all these different landmarks that are going to create a uh, face for the most part. So uh, those are the five different uh, types of analysis that it is going to be uh, used on identifying or analyzing skeletal remains. So uh, next time we are, next time I record, I will try to break it up into smaller uh, topics as to uh, help out a little bit uh, but uh, your, your book doesn't do a great job of breaking it up so I'll, I'll try to uh, schedule some uh, recorded lectures to go along with that but you do need to be reading the book uh, and taking down notes I try to break it up so it's not as much uh, at one time uh, and it kind of does jump around I understand it's not the easiest to follow all the time but like I said, your quiz will be on Thursday uh, this week on chapter 14, and we will start chapter uh, our next chapter next week. So enjoy uh, this online distance, uh, and I can't wait to get back to the classroom and get to being able to actually talk to people and things like that and get back to normal. So um, have a good day.